Running Wild with Christine, Sex, Success, and Other Slippery Rabbit Holes. Welcome to episode 25, the one with Bryce Krawcheck from Calgary Barbell. Hey Bryce, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I am very well. I was just telling you in prep that it's a fucking disgusting gray day in Vancouver, (laughs) so we're trying to stay positive. Yeah. Uh, But I'm really excited to be catching up with you because um, you and I have had very different lives since we first met. Yes, uh, I think we've both sort of embarked on our own our own personal journeys that took us very far from from the pit. From where we started, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Bryce and I met at uh, UBC bartending together mm-hmm. at the pit and the gallery. We did yep. it all. Yeah. And I remember Bryce as the like metal singer, fully tatted up, and actually quite scrawny. I probably was heavier than you back then. Yeah, it was. I was a. Uh... Getting started with the whole lifting and eating a lot thing at that point in time, but yeah, uh, you were meal prepping and starting to go to the gym, and yeah. then like time passed, and I like happened upon a picture of you on Instagram or something. I was like, "Holy crap, what happened?" <laughs> <laughs> like, excuse me, but um, it's super exciting. So um, you are now. Huh, I don't know how to preface this. So you just got a grant mm-hmm. from the Story Hive competition by yep. Telus. Yep. For an upcoming documentary called The Power Lifter. Is that a title in progress or I think that's the title that we'll stick with. That was what we put uh on the on the, the teaser trailer and the pitch and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's just gonna stick. That's gonna be what it's called. Okay, cool. So that documentary is gonna trace back how we got to Scrawny Bartender to current what is it? Two world records, three medals at world championships, and four times Canadian champion? Yep. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's the list. <laughs> so, um, yeah, tell us a bit more about that whole process. <laughs> um, so I guess, like, it was around the time where you and I would have been uh, peers, yeah. friends, uh, and, and kind of, like, seeing each other regularly that I started to develop a bit of a passion for uh, just going to the gym at the time. It was, there was really not much more to it other yeah. than I liked going to the gym. You know, I started to gain a little bit of weight and... My arms got a little bigger and I looked a little better in t-shirts and those kinds of things. So I was uh, excited to see that kind of stuff happening and, and kind of just followed that along further and further. Uh, and then down the road, decided that that was something I would try to pursue as a job, which was, you know, at the time, just kind of personal training. Yeah. Uh, I would run boot camps and things like that and just help teach other people to lift weights uh, and then that led to another thing, and I ended up here in Calgary taking a two-year diploma, uh, basically focused on personal training, coaching, uh, and furthering my education in doing those things better. From there, uh, I went from working in a sort of box gym here to starting my own business uh, called Calgary Barbell, where I now have five coaches working under me. I have a dedicated media guy who films all of our videos for our YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, we're doing apparel, we're doing online coaching, uh, a lot of educational seminars. We're looking to uh, do some stuff in Europe next year. Uh, just, yeah, it's it's, it's expanded crazy. to, uh, it's taken me a lot of crazy places and, and given me a lot of awesome experiences, you know, all stemming from just liking lifting weights at the gym, you know, so. <laughs> I know, it's, it's crazy because, like, you think, Sometimes you get to a point and you're just like, how the fuck did I get here? Like when you just add up all the little things, like I'm feeling that way right now. And Mm -hmm. I think it was like with you, it was like one of the common things when, you know, you catch up with people after university and you're like, so have you heard from so-and-so? And And it's like, have you seen Bryce? (laughs) (laughs) What happened? But it's, it's so exciting. And I think for me, like, it's really interesting that your company is doing so much and that you're going towards the docu, you know, like road because I think that we're in a time where those personal stories are the only things that we start to care about like we're so in the fake all the time that like the only attention span we have is for like real stories Mm -hmm. did you did you notice that is that sort of part of the reasoning I think I think there's a really big trend and and maybe maybe it feels like it's in powerlifting but it's probably just you know, that's, that's my scope yeah. of the world. Like that's, <laughs> that's very much what I see, uh, is in powerlifting, but definitely I think there's, you know, there's this kind of like 
fake it till you make it attitude. And sometimes that just like stays fake and substanceless. Yeah. And I, I think that one of the reasons a lot of people kind of connect with the stuff that we do is because it's, it's very transparent and it's very personal and, and we try to be vulnerable. Uh, you know, like my very first training vlog video that we put up on YouTube was me throwing my belt across the room and screaming <laughs> fuck and being pissed off because I was injured and training hurt yeah. and things weren't going well. And that runs so counter to what most people are like, oh, everything's great yeah. and I hit a new personal best and I'm so good and everything's fantastic and I'm happy all the time. Yeah. And I was just like, sometimes being an <laughs> athlete sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's a trend across the world. Like sometimes being a human sucks, <laughs> but exactly. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure um, it's worse when you're putting yourself under so much like pressure and it's like, do you think that it's... Uh, because I see in all your videos that there's like a big team around you, or it's like usually a few of you, but I'm sure mm -hmm. that it must kind of be a little bit like on your own. Like you're the only one putting pressure on you, the only one achieving, the only one failing. Like it must be kind of like, I don't know, claustrophobic inside yourself. I, I it's, yeah, it's very much an individual sport. Um, and I think I deal well with uh, other people's expectations because I think other people are very forgiving and you know, nobody, nobody expects as much out of you as yourself. So yeah, it's a lot of like, uh, intrinsic motivation and, uh, that kind of thing that continues to, to drive me to, to try to do more. Yeah. Uh, but it's also that same sort of double edged sword that really beats me up when I'm not getting where I want to be. Yeah. And so how did you get into powerlifting in particular? Um, so I, when I first started working in a gym, uh, I started working for a competitive bodybuilder and helping him train his clients. I had been doing the power lifts kind of unknowingly up to that point. You know, I, in powerlifting, we compete in the squat, the bench press and the deadlift. Yeah. And those are our, our big three disciplines, the three things that we focus on in our training. And I had been doing those very regularly in training, uh, and enjoying it. And I got to the point where... I kind of wanted to compete in something. I didn't know what, but I knew because of my bodybuilder boss, uh, and he was a good friend of mine too at the time, uh, or sorry, still is a good friend of mine. <laughs> he was Not already. insinuate anything there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Neil was a bodybuilder. I, I saw and knew what kind of went into bodybuilding prep, and it just wasn't for me. You know, the, 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 the posing and the flexing and the spray tans and those kinds of things just really... And, and the, the super aggressive dieting yeah. and the incredible, you know, sort of willpower that you have to have to restrict yourself enough to get as lean as these guys do just wasn't really for me. Yeah. Um, so Neil also did some, uh, sorry, some powerlifting in his off season and invited me out. He said, Hey, do you want to do a powerlifting meet one of these days? Uh, and he was doing one and he took me to my first meet and helped me run my numbers and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, the, the very first squat that I ever did in a powerlifting meet, I kind of knew as soon as I walked off the platform that that was just it. Yeah. That I was, it, I, you know, I walked off and I said to, uh, said to Neil, I was like, man, this is better than drugs. <laughs> like, this is better than anything I've ever tried in my life. This is amazing. <laughs> and just from that point, uh, it just consumed me. Um, That's awesome. So, yeah. It just takes that random thing to say yes to, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It just, uh, you know, all the all the stars aligned, I guess. <laughs> nice. And then, um, do you want to explain kind of like what sets powerlifting apart from, like, because to most of my listeners, I think that they won't know the difference between other lifting competitions. Mm. Right. Uh, so powerlifting, like I said, is the squat, the bench press, and the deadlift. Yeah. Most people are pretty familiar with Olympic weightlifting. Uh, which is the snatch and the clean and jerk. Basically, if the bar goes over your head, it's not powerlifting. That's Olympic lifting. Okay. Uh, a lot of other people have probably seen strongman competitions where people are lifting the big giant cement stones yeah. uh, up onto platforms and deadlifting cars and all that kind of crazy stuff. Uh, and that's a whole other sport of its own called strongman. So there are a number of, of strength sports. And the one that I compete in is kind of like Olympic weightlifting in the setup and the execution, but the lifts that we perform are different. Okay, cool. And yeah. so, how do you so how do you go from like one lift at a meet 
to, you know, Canadian Nationals and World Championships? Uh, <laughs> obsession. Like, you personally. <laughs> I don't mean, like, how do people. Like, obsession? Yeah, I think that was, like, like I said, from that point on, I got, I got pretty hooked on it. Uh, I started working in the field. I started coaching other lifters uh, and, and getting my, my personal training clients to do powerlifting style training. I started reading and learning every single thing that I could. I started tracking all my food. I started tracking my sleep. I started, you know, um, looking into all the equipment and different things that you can do to try to get an edge on, on performing and lifting better and recovering better and training better and all those kinds of things. Um, and then it got to a point where I, I kind of had my first meet where it was really competitive. You know, it was me and another guy and it was provincial championships and it came right down to the very last lift of the day and it was very, very close, like two and a half, five kilogram difference. And that was such a rush. Like it was, it was the next step yeah. of that. Holy crap. This is the best yeah. feeling. Uh, and from that point I was like, wow, like, okay, this, this is what it's like to be competitive. I want to be as competitive as I possibly can. So at that point I really kind of doubled down again. Uh, and I think, honestly, I think my, my kind of obsession with lifting was part of what led to me, uh, separating or, or breaking up with the girl that I was seeing at the time you would have known me. Yeah. Um, uh, because I just, I changed as a person. I, I, you know, kind of found this path that I really wanted to follow and I went head first down it. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, we grew apart because of that. Um, but, uh, I absolutely don't regret a thing. Um, yeah. I was just going to say, it's so funny to watch you, like, say the words because, like, I remember, I actually kind of remember you having that kind of obsessive drive side, but it just mm -hmm. didn't have anywhere to go. Like, yeah. it was, it was, it's so funny because you were trying to be like that about your music and, like, you know, you were super committed in any relationship you had, whether it was a friendship or whatever. And I'm, I'm just, like, super glad to see that it went somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that was a big thing that kind of ended my my uh, time with with the band and with music was I didn't feel like I had that sense of agency, yeah. that that ability to get in what I, get out what I put in. Uh, yeah, you know, it's you really kind of had to wait for other people to call you and like wait to try to get a show and hopefully the right people heard your music. Whereas this, it's like if I feel like I need to do something and I need to be better, like I go to the gym and yeah. I put in the work. And, you know, I see those results manifest almost, you know, shot for shot kind of thing. So yeah. that was something I wasn't getting with music um, and something that really was a black and white difference when I started getting into lifting. It totally is. And I think that's like kind of like most of like creative struggle is that like you the the bar for like good or bad or improving or you know there's no there's no standard there's no it's all subjective and it's like this exactly. beautiful mess which i love it suits right. me but it definitely if you're looking to achieve like goals it's like you have to set very random and weird goals to achieve them like there's no trajectory yeah. um but yeah then, it's not as easy to like track progress I mean, yes, if you're writing a number of words, but, like, you can write a lot of words and they can all be shit, like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, but what was I going to say? So, yeah, and then from that point, like, I think that it's really interesting how you, like, um, publicize, like, your achievements and, like, the whole... Because I followed you on Instagram, I think, from the beginning that I found out that that's what you were doing. Okay. And it's very cool to see that you're still you like I, I see like I hear you in the comments because it's like yay this is the achievement of the team and then the next post is like I suck or like this is like <laughs> don't compare yourself like because this is toxic and I was like yes thank you yeah is that is that the reason for the documentary is that sort of like the root of it uh I, I think that's part of it um the the documentary is definitely and I can't remember if I said this to you before we started recording or not. Okay. Uh, Say it again. But it, it's something that we were going to do either way. Yeah. You know, we kind of, we came out and through our YouTube channel have kind of like grown a bit of a following now. Um, and it's always kind of been just kind of tagging along with my training. And, yeah. you know, from the onset of the YouTube channel, I have been a pretty high performing and, and like, you know, uh, international athlete. Uh, but I think that there's value in going back and, and kind of like we did in this conversation, retracing those steps uh, and, and 
showing people, I guess, what it what it took. But um, yeah, just the the different sort of facets of that progression, uh, I think, are interesting, uh, and they help to kind of humanize the success because a lot of people, I think, see uh, high performance athletes and they think, okay, you know that's they're just wired different they're genetic <laughs> freaks they're this they're on drugs they're whatever yeah um and i don't think maybe people understand entirely what it takes to kind of get to that level for sure uh, for sure and i think there's a lot especially with uh athleticism there's a lot of like oh you've been doing that your whole life that's all you've ever done like that's mm-hmm. why you're so good and it's like no like how old were you when you started like mid-20s uh, i think i did my first meet when i was 24 so i've been doing this for six years now yeah so that's actually quite late for like athleticism yeah. like and you're I think that's going to be a very interesting part for, I think, people in our generation Mm -hmm. where like we kind of, I don't know if you noticed this, but I noticed it a lot with my friends, like late twenties is like this like weird zone where like we kind of followed a path that was what we've been taught, you know, finish school, do this, like follow Mm -hmm. this very traditional path. And then you get to like your early twenties and you sort of start noticing that that's not the world that we live in. And then in your late twenties, you're like, "Holy shit! What the fuck am I doing? Like, why have I done like this?" Or, and then, yeah. and then it's kind of hard because you're started making money, so you're like, "Well, to change, I would have to like give up everything to do something else." Or like, but you can actually make little changes quite like gradually, mm-hmm. and and like we accidentally became other people, but that's like. I don't know how to say it, but there's like a weird thing where I think that's going to be interesting for other people to see is that like, it's not, it wasn't like, right now I'm just doing this. It's like, Oh, I like this. Like, I'm just going to gravitate 2% closer to mm-hmm. that. And then 2% closer to that. And then was that how it felt for you or? Absolutely. It was, it was all those kind of little decisions and, and, uh, tens, tendencies, uh, and the little bits of practice and those kinds of things. It wasn't like, you know, uh, when, when we were working at the pit, I was like, Hmm, I wonder, I wonder if I'll ever run a successful powerlifting company and create YouTube content and sell apparel and coach people from around the world and be an internationally successful, successful, uh, powerlifting athlete. It was like, Oh, I like doing squats, (laughs) you know? And then it, it just kind of, yeah, yeah. It was those little shifts in thought and, and focus and, and that kind of stuff, and then you, you almost don't realize that you're there until you're there. And I'll, I'll be somewhere different in a couple of years, I'm sure. I'm sure. Whether yeah. it's further along this path or, or a totally different one, who knows? Yeah, I, I feel you on that for sure. Um, <laughs> but what was I going to say? Is there um, a central point, you think, that'll come out of the documentary that, to you, is like key, that's different from the stuff that you're doing on social media? Uh, I think there's kind of two main things, and we need to flesh this out more, um, Dylan and I. So Dylan yes, is tell us more about Dylan. The, the guy who is the mastermind behind all of the content that we put out. He's a self-taught videographer, um, and kind of just we met each other at the exact right time and started working together. He was looking for a subject, and I didn't know YouTube was really a thing. <laughs> Uh, or that you could use it as a vehicle for your business and those kinds of things. I, I was just like, oh yeah, cool. We'll make some videos and maybe that'll uh, maybe that'll be good marketing or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And Dylan had been practicing kind of filming some of his own training and those kinds of things, and he's like, well, I'm not that strong, and like I I don't know if people are that interested to see me lift and whatever. He's like, but you're like a, an Doing athlete it. at the top of the game kind of thing, and um, so we we kind of we started working together and yeah the rest is history so uh we, like i was saying we need to kind of flesh out the the uh, core concepts of the video a little bit more uh but definitely talking about my journey through powerlifting uh and also almost as a parallel the the journey that powerlifting as a sport is going through um as as a somewhere between an amateur and a professional sport mm. uh, and struggling to kind of find its own identity within those bounds. There are, I don't even know how many different governing bodies within powerlifting. Some yeah. of them are aligned. Some of them are not. 
some of them have very different rules. There's, it's just the Wild West, really. <laughs> so trying to come up with some sort of uniformity and trying to see more transparency at the higher levels yeah. of the governing of the sport. Uh, it's just there's a lot. We've, we've come a long ways with the insurge of sort of popularity and the mm-hmm. people who were interested in barbell strength training. Uh, and as a result, the number of competitors. But there's still a lot to be done and a lot that, uh, you know, we can do better. So I think looking at where powerlifting has come from and where it's going uh, in sort of a parallel to my own journey yeah. through the sport. That's super exciting. I would watch that. Cool. <laughs> I'm glad. And then I also wanted to ask you um, on a personal level, because you kind of mentioned it before, like I know along your um, sport success, you've like bought a house, got married. Like, Mm -hmm. do you think that because I always sort of like see these things either happening in parallel or in complete disjuncture, like it's either like people seem to like be going in the same direction or it's like, you know, one's falling apart when the other one's doing well. Mm. Uh, but I think because your like your work is so focused on you being sort of like mentally present and stable, do you think that was like a major con- contributor to like figuring out what you want, not only in that sphere, but also like in those lands or, do, or was it like accidental you just met the right person at the right time I think it was a bit of both um, I think that it definitely helped like I met Selena in the gym yeah. uh, funny story actually I, <laughs> I kind of I didn't really like her her trainer and she <laughs> she trained with another trainer at the gym uh, when I was working at a commercial gym and he came up to me one day and I had seen her squatting uh, and admired from afar <laughs> um, but uh her trainer just wasn't doing a good job of coaching her to do these movements better. Basically, it was my my gripe with the whole thing. He came up to me and said, "Oh, Selene should be a powerlifter. She's she's super strong." And I was like, "Yeah, well, she'd have to squat to depth, and I've never seen her do that." <laughs> more more as a shot at the trainer yeah, yeah, than yeah. at her, obviously. And he went back and told her like, "Oh, Bryce doesn't think you could be a powerlifter. He doesn't think you got what it takes." <laughs> So our first interaction was her coming up to me and telling me off uh, because she was like, oh, you think I can't do this? Like, maybe if you got a problem, you should come talk to me instead of telling everybody else about it. You were like, uh, uh, And that was, yeah, that was our, our very first interaction. What did you say? I could totally picture you being like, uh. Yeah, I, 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 we wore red shirts at the time. Yeah. Uh, and I think my face was the same color as my shirt. And I just kind of stood there stunned. Uh, until I could gather myself and then I went and talked to her afterwards and was kind of like you know I didn't say that I just don't think he's very good (laughs) Uh, if you ever want help with your squats just let me know she was like way to recover buddy (laughs) yeah yeah the rest was uh the rest was history but uh but I think I think kind of knowing who I am and where I'm headed and having those things defined made it easier to see if another person you know fit properly into that and alongside that um, so there was definitely some of that and definitely just running into an amazing person that, you know, compliments me and pushes me to be a better person. Um, so yeah, some luck and, and some kind of just like work. knowing yourself, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. I mean, I don't know. I'm still single for a reason cause I still have a lot of work to do <laughs> on my own self, not blaming anybody else. Um, but, um, what was I going to say? Yeah. Cause I always like, I remember you always sort of like having this, like we've had like deep, long drunken chats at like after <laughs> closing, drinking lots of beers, um, yep. for, for setting for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and you were always sort of very like, even though we like were late nights drinking all night and you know, like late night scene, quote unquote, unhealthy lifestyles. Mm-hmm. Um, you always had this like wholesome vision of what your life would be like. <laughs> you did. You do you remember? Uh, or is this one kind of, those of weird maybe. things? That... I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe you can refresh my memory. Yeah, I think it's funny. The more I do this stuff, especially with people that I know, they're like, I remember this thing, and I don't remember. And it's like we have very competing memories. Mm-hmm. Um, but you were always like, yeah. I, I think we were in our early twenties, so you kind of talk about relationships in a very sort of clueless and idealistic way still do but you know Mm -hmm. more um and you were kind of like yeah i think like 
I'm imagining being married. Like, I remember you saying stuff like that, like, you know, considering that sort of very long-term vision back then. And I was like, huh, that's so interesting because it contrasted with, like, the rest of our lives, which was very much like, I'm hungry, so I'll eat at three in the morning, regardless, you know, like, there was no yeah. thought process to any of our actions. Yeah, um, for sure. But, uh, but it's, it's funny that you had that from the beginning. Yeah, I think it's always kind of been one of those things, and I'm I'm almost too good at just going with the flow sometimes. Uh, like my wife is very Selena's very uh, type A. Like she makes lists of lists that she needs to make. <laughs> I love her already. <laughs> yeah, uh, you guys should get along. Um, and I am very very good at flying by the seat of my pants. Yeah, but uh, so there's... I mean at the time people would be like, oh, like do you think you'll ever settle down? And it's like, yeah, I don't know, why not. <laughs> Yeah, but but I remember actually more than I don't know why not. You were kind of like, okay, this is like I'm gonna need someone to actually like do that for me. <laughs> like, keep me in order, organize my <laughs> shit. Yeah, <laughs> like this is all nice and well, but also help. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, what else was I gonna ask you? There's so many ways we can go with this. I always like I'm happy to catch up with people, but I re- I forget that we're recording. So yeah, this is this is the whole thing. Is there um, is there like for you a still like a big issue that you see in the sport and the way that it's portrayed? Because you're playing a big part in portraying it. Mm-hmm. Like, what's your biggest sort of personal beef with like expectations, either from like the because I we talk a lot about social media in general and like how uh, negative or like toxic it can be, mm-hmm. and I'm sure in that world it's like amplified. Yeah, I think I think there are some things that that can be done better. Um, like I said, transparency from the the top levels and the organizing levels, I think a lot of times is lacking uh, in powerlifting. I think that the people who uh, are in charge and in charge of the money and in charge of deciding what you know what powerlifters can wear and what they can't and oh. those kinds of things, um, you know, we we could do a better job of a lot of that kind of stuff, but. A lot of it, like I said earlier, is just kind of growing pains of the sport, not really knowing what it is yet. Uh, I think on the athlete side of things, uh, I don't know. I, I like I, it's hard for me to, to pick apart too many things because I love the sport so much, yeah. uh, and I literally I'm, I'm like I'm coming down off a high from uh, coaching. We had 17 athletes competing this weekend yeah. uh, over two days, and we had five people on the podium. And, Amazing! Uh, just the community is so great. That um, yeah, I don't know. I just yeah, I find it hard to like not focus on the positive stuff. I guess, <laughs> um, but yeah, social media can be rough. And I think on a personal level, a lot of times looking at your competitors and seeing where they're at can be really tough to see. Especially if your training's maybe not going so well, it can yeah. be really hard not to draw those comparisons and end up, you know, kind of beating yourself up because they're like, oh well. You know, so-and-so's making a lot of progress there and we're competing in three months and I am I feel like I'm spinning my wheels right now. And, you know, you yeah. just get into this mindset that's uh, not ideal for what, what do you do? being a better athlete. What do you do? Do you turn it off or? Yeah, I, 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 unfollow, I unfollowed a lot of people. Um, and, like, in some cases even sent them a message and was like, hey, man, like, I think you're a great athlete. I think you're a great dude. I just can't watch you train because it messes me up and that's just what it is so but that's a super healthy way to deal with it yeah i mean i try to social media can be a i don't know it's really easy to to fall into a trap with it and i'm probably guilty of being on my phone way too much selena would back that up yeah pretty heavily yeah Uh, and being too accessible to my clients and things like that where I'm answering emails and messages at all hours of the night and, you know, sending out people's programming late. And, you know, when they ask, so I get, I send out people's programming every weekend. Sometimes people forget to ask me on time. Yeah. So, you know, Selena's like, well, you should just charge them a bunch of money or just send it out late and whatever, because you're busy and like, you shouldn't mess up your Sunday night because somebody forgot to tell you they needed programming. Yeah. Um, But a lot of times I'm the guy who's like, oh, well, I'll just sneak (laughs) off and like send send their programming on those kinds of things. So, yeah, but I think it's hard to juggle. Um, And I think we don't like sort of 
realize how much of that is actually part of the job now because it didn't used to be like being on your phone <clears throat> meant a distraction like for a lot yep. of our lives whereas now like especially like for myself being on my phone is my job like mm -hmm. my unpaid many hours a week job and so I I hate it because I want to throw my phone in the ocean and never like have to like look at a notification and wonder if it's like work wise and then notice that it's like my mom liking a picture from like six months ago and be like thanks mom I like just interrupted a really nice conversation with someone to yeah. see that um, yeah. but also it's part of the job it's part of the job now and like we need to be better at like acknowledging that to ourselves and to like people around because I love and hate when someone tells me to put my phone away because I'm just like yes thank you for the reminder but also I have to, like, it's, I hate it, but I have to, and it's, oh, it's just so. It's, it's something that I think is tough to, to strike a balance with, uh, because we're so connected and because like for my business to, to coach people online, uh, you know, I, I will watch their Instagram videos. They'll send me footage through the emails. Uh, we'll have shared spreadsheets on Google drive and those kinds of things. So we're very interconnected. They'll have questions. They'll be in the gym saying, here's a video of my squat. What do you think? Felt really shitty. Should I go up? Should I go down? Should I repeat the same weight? Should I, whatever? Or like, I had something in my back tweak and start to hurt. What do I do? Uh, and I, I really like to try to be available yeah. and on point and on top of those things because I feel like that makes me a better coach. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you know, like I think, I think the big thing is setting boundaries. Uh, for things like vacations and having a couple days a week where you, uh, you know, like my Sunday, Monday is kind of my weekend. Those are usually the days that Selena gets off. So uh, I'll, I'll do like a little bit of work from my computer yes. on those days. <laughs> Thank you for taping on a Monday. <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of just hanging out today. So it's, it's nice. It's nice to chat. Um, but yeah. And yeah, like Selena ended up having to work today anyway. So perfect <laughs> it, it, it's not too bad yeah I think that setting the boundaries is like a big one because you can so easily get lost in like the hyper speed of it all like you were saying like they're texting you during their training or for me it's like I have time now like to discuss this thing that and you're just like okay I have to catch this like window of, yeah. of doing this and and at the same time you want to be because you're entrepreneurial so you want to be like on top of it and seek and you know grabbing every opportunity if it comes up at the right time but at the same <laughs> time like the mental health aspect of it all is just like so often disregarded and just like yeah. oh it's easy to be on your phone it's like well i'm not actually enjoying it like it's not <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not playing games here i'm not having fun <laughs> like well, I mean, all work work can be fun in its own way kind of but yeah. There's only so many hours you can spend on Instagram and find it fun. Like it's like yeah. it's like the first That's 5 true. minutes and then you're just like, "Oh god." <laughs> but um but cool. And how do you like how do you set the balance then? What's the like do you have next big goals or is it like is this the big project now? Oh, um it's it's hard to say. We got a lot of things up in the air right now. I just hired a new trainer. Uh, so she's going to be starting in the gym to teach or to do to do personal training. Um, she's going to be taking on online clients as well. We've got this video project. Uh, we're starting to do, uh, like I said earlier, more media work. So we're looking at doing um, a big thing recently with powerlifting because it's an individual sport. People want it documented. So there are companies that provide photo and video package services for the competition. So they'll come in, they'll film you, they'll, you know, take photos, etc., yeah. and then they'll sell it to you afterwards basically. So we're looking at getting into that market because Dylan's so talented with a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Just kind of it just kind of fits. Yeah. Um uh we're going to be selling programming uh and creating a program library that people can purchase programs from. Uh and we're doing some really cool stuff that uh I'm just going to kind of keep under wraps with yeah. that yeah. Uh, and some sort of extra elements and perks that will come with purchasing those programs that I don't think are being done anywhere else. Mm. And I think that's the big thing is that everything we get into, we try to just do like a little bit more or a little bit better than what everybody else is doing Yeah, and just try to like raise that bar of things just a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, then that and also hopefully helps. that kind of sets us apart, right? 
that and it also like I guess you have your personal experience so it'll make it easier for anyone starting now mm -hmm. to have the tools that you wish you had maybe yeah um, and yeah like I said we're looking to do some more traveling uh, in the next year or so to do some seminars uh, in UK and France it's looking like right now uh, and then I have some big plans for competing in the next two years Ooh. Uh, We'll see, we'll see what happens with that more as it unfolds. But, uh, <laughs> good. I have some, some really big plans, at least as far as powerlifting is concerned. That's awesome. I will definitely be linking um, your YouTube and your Instagram and everything down in the oh, description great. of the episode so people can go check it out. Um, is there something that you would say to your 24-year-old self? Oh, boy. Mm. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, this might just sound lame or vain or something like that, but I, I'd probably just say like, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, cause I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, it's like, uh, it's a I couldn't, I couldn't be happier about where I've landed, where I've ended up and who I've ended up with and those kinds of things. So Probably just just tell him to keep trucking to do do what he's gonna do so that I end up in the same spot. <laughs> That's awesome. I think it's I think we have a, as a society a problem with talking about being happy. <laughs> yeah. Like I was telling, I was talking to a friend and I was like, "Do you want to come on my podcast?" And she's like, "But what am I gonna say? I'm happily married." I was like, oh, "Well, <laughs> you're gonna talk about being happily married as." <laughs> Can you talk about that? She was just like, it, it sounds so braggy. And I'm like, it's not, though. Like, why are we constantly talking about, like, you know, breaking up or, like, you know, not divorcing or couples therapy or, or you know, just general therapy? Um, I'm like, that's, yes, we should talk about all those things, absolutely. But, like, mm -hmm. it's also nice to remind yourself that actually happy is in some kind of, like, weird utopian land that yeah. nobody ever gets to. Yeah. And it's also, I think, like, it's not a, it's not an overarching thing where you're either, like, wholly happy or wholly upset or, or wholly depressed or di disappointed yeah. or whatever. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that's gradients and it might be, you might be happier with certain aspects of your life than others. And yeah. it's, it's all, it's all spectrum kind of stuff. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's easy to be happy in, in the moments if you choose to, I think. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that choosing to is like the part that's crucial. Yeah. Because like there's there's most of the time there are rare times where yeah okay maybe you have nothing to be happy about that happens. Yeah. Yeah. But definitely. but most of the time there's lots to be happy about. Yeah. I think so. Um. But yeah. So thanks. Is there anything else you want to say to the listeners regarding anything about you know anything that you do or or some kind of message? I would probably say go check out Christine's book. Yay! <laughs> if you haven't, I haven't, and I should. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's book. let's all go do that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thanks so much for your time, Bryce. And, Absolutely. Um, yeah. Hopefully, you'll come to Vancouver soon so we can hang out again. Yeah, I have. I still have some tattoo work I need finished out there, so we'll see. Yay! Selena's got some some friends that live out there, and I think uh, it won't be long before we have uh, the stars aligned so we can get back out there at some Amazing. point. Amazing! You can always stay with us. We've got room. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks you guys for listening. If you have any questions, as usual, you can tweet at me and you know reach Bryce whichever way you want in the description. Um, and yeah, if you have any suggestions or topics you want me or us to address feel free uh, as usual please subscribe rate review all the clicks things um and have a nice weekend the podcast you just heard was published with anchor got something you want to say to the creator of this show send them a voice message using the anchor app free for iOS and Android.